In this video, we will look at time series visibility graphs. This is a hot area of research with many papers being published on the topic every year. So what is a visibility graph and why should you care? This channel is focused on algorithmic trading, so let's start with the familiar candlestick data we all know and love. A time series is a series of data points indexed by time. The closing price of candlestick data is a time series. Time series analysis is a well-documented practice, and there are many different ways to analyze a time series. A seemingly separate topic is graph or network theory. A graph is a mathematical structure built of nodes and links, where the nodes represent some object and the links represent some kind of relation between them. There are many different metrics and algorithms to analyze graphs. It's a whole field of study. The visibility graph gives us a way to convert a time series into a graph. This gives us a bridge between time series analysis and graph theory. For a trading application, we often consider the price data. We can convert the price to a visibility graph, then analyze the resulting graph with the many tools from network science to gain insights about the price behavior. Perhaps there is valuable information to be gained from the visibility graphs of the price. This is what I've been researching recently, and I do not think this is going to lead to the holy grail of trading, but it is a different angle to approach technical analysis. I am fairly certain the majority of traders have never heard of visibility graphs, so it may allow us to find some edges or patterns in the market that have have little competition. Let's look at how to convert a time series to a visibility graph. The process is quite intuitive. We'll use this series of 10 values as an example. I think it's easier to understand how this works if we use a bar chart instead. So here's the same data plotted as a bar chart. Each value in the time series will correspond to a node in the resulting graph. There will be a link between the nodes if there is an uninterrupted line of sight between the values. Let's consider the bar on the fifth index. There is a clear line of sight between this bar and the bar on the third index. This is how links on the visibility graph are created. The line of sight between the bars on the fifth and ninth index is interrupted by the bar on the seventh index, so there will not be a link between their corresponding nodes on the visibility graph. Here is every uninterrupted line of sight involving the bar on the fifth index. And here is every uninterrupted line of sight for all the bars. Let's look at the visibility graph now. The orange dots are the nodes, one for each value in the time series. There is a link between each pair of nodes that have an uninterrupted line of sight between them. Each of the red lines correspond to a link on the graph. A common way to represent a graph is an adjacency matrix. This matrix is symmetric, meaning it is the same on both sides of the diagonal. The row and column numbers correspond to each node. The ones in the matrix represent a link in the graph. For example, there is a one on row three, column seven, and on the graph, there is a link between node three and seven. I wrote the code to convert a time series to a visibility graph, and I was planning on going over it for the video, but after I wrote the code, I noticed there was an already existing Python module to do it called TS2VG. My code to do the conversion is still on GitHub, and it may be more readable than the code in the Python module if you're curious. But the Python module is done using Cython, so it is much faster, and I'll be using that. Here's the code to convert a time series to a visibility graph. First, we import natural visibility graph from the Python module. The visibility graphs I've shown so far have all been natural visibility graphs. There are different variations of visibility graphs, most notably the horizontal visibility graph. I'll show an example of one in a moment. We have a NumPy array. This is the same example series we saw earlier. We create an instance of natural VG, then call its build function with the data. The TS2VG module has convenient methods to convert the graph to various formats, but here we get the adjacency matrix. We pass the adjacency matrix and data into the function plot TS visibility. I wrote this function to draw visibility graphs. Its code is on the GitHub repo. Here is the visibility graph for our example series. And here is a visibility graph for a cosine wave with four cycles. And here is the visibility graph using daily Bitcoin data from December of 2022. All of these graphs shown are natural visibility graphs. There is another variant called horizontal visibility graphs. Here we see the natural visibility graph and the horizontal visibility graph for the same series. They are mostly the same, but the horizontal visibility graph does not have a link between nodes 1 and 3, where the natural visibility graph does. Research papers will use different forms of the visibility graph depending on the application. For the remainder of the video, we will continue using natural visibility graphs. 
Here's the visibility graph of daily Bitcoin data in December 2022. Something important to note, all the visibility lines are above the price. So the resulting graph contains information about which prices are visible from higher prices. This seems like only half the story. What about the lower prices? If we simply multiply the input series by negative one, when building the visibility graph, we get this instead. Comparing the regular inputs graph and the negative inputs graph, the results are quite different. The graphs have completely different lengths. Later, we will compute the same metric on both of these graphs and compare them to build a simple trading rule. This Python library, Network X, has a ton of common network analysis, algorithms, and metrics. One metric I found interesting is the average shortest path length. The shortest path length between two nodes is the minimum number of links that you have to traverse to get from one node to the other. So if you were going from node 1 to node 12, the minimum path length is 1, because there is a direct link between 1 and 12. The shortest path length between node 1 and 13 is 2, because you'd have to go from node 1 to 12, and then from node 12 to 13. And the shortest path length between node 1 and node 25 is 3, because you'd have to go from node 1 to 12, 12 to 13, and then 13 to 25. Finding the shortest path length between each pair of nodes in the graph, then averaging them, gives the average shortest path length. Let's look at the code to compute this in a rolling window. Here's a function to do it. We pass an array of closing prices and a look back. We create two output arrays. We will compute the average shortest path length on the regular visibility graph and the visibility graph computed with negative prices. We loop through the data. We get the recent closing price values as specified by the look back parameter. We create a visibility graph using the recent values. Then create another visibility graph using the negative recent values. We convert the graphs to the network x format, then we call the network x function average shortest path length on each of the graphs. Network x has several other graph metrics, for example, assortativity. You can replace the average shortest path function with something else if you want to experiment. Anyways, let's use the function. We load in hourly Bitcoin data from a CSV. We use a lookback of 12. We get the closing price as a NumPy array. We pass our closing price and lookback into the function we just went over. Then we add the average shortest path lengths to the data frame. Here's a plot of the average shortest path length from our rolling visibility graphs. The two outputs are stationary throughout the data, and it looks like an indicator to me. We know this is the average shortest path length of the visibility graphs, but what does this tell us about the price? To help answer this question, let's look at the visibility graph that produced the maximum and minimum value of the average shortest path length. We find the index of the maximum and minimum value. We then get the preceding values as specified by the lookback. Then we build the visibility graph and plot them. Here's the visibility graph that produced the maximum average shortest path length. It is 3.54. On the graph, we can see there's very few connections, only three connections that skip a node. Here is the visibility graph that produced the minimum average shortest path length. It is 1.12. The price made the opposite shape here. On the graph, nearly every node is connected. So let's try a very simple trading rule. When the positive average shortest path length is above the negative average shortest path length, we'll go long and go short otherwise. Here is the code for this. We load in our data. Compute the next log return, compute our indicator, then create the signals. I made one for long, short, and both combined. We multiply our signals by the next log return, then we compute the profit factors. Here is the cumulative log return for this simple rule. It does work really well in certain periods. These results do not include trading fees or slippage. Also, the trade signals have a lot of whipsaws and it has a position in the market 100% of the time. This is not a complete trading strategy. But this rough draft of a system shows the indicator has some potency, warranting further research and refinement. To me, this indicator is particularly promising, as some of the time periods where this rule does really well are time periods where other trading strategies struggle. Here's a heat map of profit factors using the same average shortest path trading rule across several lookbacks for the visibility graphs. There is a big drop off in performance at higher lookbacks, but the lookback 12 I chose was not a fluke, the neighboring values did good as well. I hope you find visibility graphs as interesting as I do, let me know what you think. If you like my videos, consider subscribing to my Patreon. Big shout out to those who have. The average shortest path length indicator shows promise, but that's only one of hundreds of graph metrics that have been proposed. This stuff is fairly new to me, I've been reading about visibility graphs for a while now, and I'm now getting around to experimenting with them. Papers proposing new ideas get published regularly, and I have quite a few I want to implement. Anyways, that's it for this one. Thank you for watching.